Good evening. Uh, Norman Soberdick, 70 Tide Mill Road, speaking on behalf of the Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. Uh, my comments tonight are primarily related to the default budget. I had intended initially to send you a copy of what I was going to say. I was traveling most of the day, so I couldn't do it, but I will send you a written version of what I ha I'm saying. As you know, the board approved the 2015 default budget last Monday in the amount of uh, 26 million five hundred thousand. That's 886,000 increase over the 2014 budget, despite health insurance going down by 200,000, retirement costs rising by only 144. Combine these two primary factors that were cited earlier in the year's budget process as the main drivers of a huge increase actually decreased by 56. The default budget is a 15-page report containing 500 line items. The approval process to us was unacceptably nonchalant. It was provided to the selectmen shortly before last Monday's meeting while the town manager was out on medical leave. And with all due respect to Christy, this is the first budget of a new finance director. The discussion and approval of last week's meeting lasted all of four minutes. Uh, and the only question asked related to the uh, assistant town manager being included in the default budget. There was no discussion and uh, after Selectman Griffin's motion to approve and unanimously vote on the default budget. And that's what we're asking you to take a look at again. The default budget is defined in the statute as the same amount as last year while allowing for increases that are the result of legally enforceable obligations are mandated by law. Legal commitments approved during 2014 primarily impacting employee compensation costs as well as stretch interpretations by town staff classifying many increases in the default budgets as contractual or statutory has produced what we believe is an end run around the voters. Here are a few of the items that we believe assert our, support our assertion. A $30,000 increase associated with the reclassification of a deputy tax collector from part-time to full-time, a 70,000 increase in sick leave buyback expenses driven by the expansion of qualifying events, a $25,000 increase distributed between two positions in the planning department, 21,000 wage increase in the library budget, 40,000 for the additional position in the assessing department noted as a statutory requirements. The statute may stipulate property revaluation every five years and other requirements, but the need to add people to do it should be justified and approved by the town. 35,000 in bank service charges, a new line item this year is cited as a contractual commitment. We understand Citizens Bank is charging the town as much as a thousand a month in credit card fees. Have we entered into a legally binding obligation to pay these credit card fees that we're stuck with for 2015? And finally, a 50,000 or 5.7 percent solid waste tipping fees. While we do understand that there is a CPI-driven escalator in the waste management contract, the CPI has been running only between 1 and 2 percent for the past year. When adjusted for the decline in health insurance rates, the selectmen's proposed operating budget is a million and a half increase over 2014. It's also 644000 more than your 2015 default budget. And there's a very good chance the voters will select a default budget. The explanation that is mostly out of your control due to increases in health insurance and cost, retirement costs, in my opinion, doesn't cut it. They actually went down. Again, we're asking you to go back and revisit this and for further discussion and uh, it's a very important topic. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Silbert.